So Edgar, um, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Where did you grow up um, and how did you become involved in the arts? Uh, well, I grew up in uh, grew up in Northern Virginia, right outside DC. Uh, but I'm originally from from Mexico. Mm. Uh, I migrated here to the U.S. undocumented, and I went through a lot of things growing up. Uh, art wasn't really an outlet for me. I, it was, I was very creative since I was younger, uh, but it didn't become an outlet until I, I went to college, and I decided to be an art major, graphic design, and, and photography. Mm. Uh, but I always had this uh, desire to work with kids. And so I did a minor in secondary education. Uh, and that kind of kind of uh, got me started, like thinking, how can I make my art practice more uh, socially socially aware? Yes. To get think, kids to think more about how can they uh, make something positive out of their art. Not just make, make something that looks cool or is cute or... Mm-hmm. or or aesthetically pleasing, but that has like a, a meaning behind it. And I, I didn't think my, I think my practice started becoming that uh, towards the end of my uh, undergrad and then starting graduate school. That's so, awesome. Yeah, and, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more with the other questions of one of my biggest uh, reasons why I am an artist. But how about yourself? Um, um, I guess kind of similar. I was um, born in Vietnam and I came to the US with my family when I was four. I grew up in um, Boston area, um, but I would say pretty much East Coast um, of the U.S. Um, I consider myself an artist and an organizer right now. I, um, I grew up as a very creative person. I did drawings, paintings, um, but I pretty much, um, yeah, I think arts was my outlet a bit growing up, and it was my favorite subject throughout school. Um, but I think I really became, um, really, I would consider myself an artist, artist especially in college and beyond. Mm-hmm. Um, I study um, ethnic studies and visual arts when I was in my undergrad. Okay. And um, last year in graduate school, I studied um, arts and politics. And then, um, and now I'm really trying to build I, actually my work around um, art and organizing in the Southeast okay. Asian community. Yeah. So that's, um, yeah, that's actually currently where, where I'm at. I work with um, Mekong, the Southeast Asian community in the Bronx, New uh-huh. York, um, yeah. around organizing advocacy and arts and culture. Yeah, I remember you uh, talking a little bit about it at our uh, last kind of video conference. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, parts of that, yeah. 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 So it's, it's really great. I feel like I'm um, engaging what I've been learning and what I feel like my life has brought me to um, in a different areas that I've been, you know, um, that experience um, both in my family community and then now trying to engage it all. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, so what, what school uh, are you, uh, are you currently attending or, or in what program? So I actually, I, um, I graduated, but I was in um, the NYU, New York University Arts and Politics program. It was in the Arts and, po- and Policy Department. And um, it's the only program of its kind in the country that I know of. I think there's an emerging arts and politics field, but um, so far it's the only um, program I know that actively engages students in really questioning um, what art means, I think in the context of social change, society, institutions. So um, yeah, the program has really taught me a lot about, um, yeah, what it means to make art and what does art represent in, in our culture and what it can possibly mean for going forward. Um, um, yeah. And um, how about yourself? Can you tell me a bit about, a bit about your school and why you chose to um, engage in the, the school that you do? Um, well, my, my program is not, not so much focused on uh, the, the politics. Mm. I mean, we talk a lot about uh, politics and the makeup of a, of a community and, and the intermixing of, of, of different people that make up a community and actually to get mm. things going. But my program, I'm at... I'm in Baltimore, Maryland. Mm. I'm at the Maryland Institute College of Art. Mm. Uh, and I'm studying uh, my MFAs in community arts. So I relate to a lot of things you were saying as to uh, uh, being, being an organizer and also using art as a, as a component to create a social justice or awareness uh, in an issue. Um, so I, I think my undergrad kind of set me up, or my personal interest in undergrad set me mm. up for this program, um, I can we can. Do you want to share some of your work that you've been doing uh, in the past year? Or I have I've I've been really busy this past 
semester just because of uh, like my thesis work. So I have a lot of images uh, that I can show you, and, and I think you really enjoy a specific thing that I've been using as an organizing tool. Yeah, that would be really great. I'm actually, it might be a little hard. I'm actually on my work computer, but I can talk about some of the work that um, I've been engaging in. Um, actually, one of my, I actually came back from a trip in Southeast Asia um, for the past month. Yeah. And I was in um, Vietnam where my family is. And uh, I also went to Cambodia for a few days. Yeah. And um, it was really great because, um, so it's one thing I'm, I'm actually trying to transition and focus on is, um, actually um, where my family is from and um, that's Vietnam. And so I'm actively trying to engage um, both communities that I work with in the U.S. as well as abroad in Southeast Asia. Are, are you working, so your community right now, is it from Vietnam or is it, uh, what's the, like where are they from? So um, my, my family is in Vietnam, but the community that I work with in the U.S. is um, the Vietnamese and Cambodian community. In the okay. Bronx, so um, I'm trying to kind of create work that kind of highlights this like transnational kind of um, background that um, that I'm a part of, and as well as kind of addresses kind of this migration and displacement that happens, I think, um, from war, and um, I think how that kind of separates and also connect people in a whole different dimension. So um, I, I just came back from my trip where I did a lot of um, f photographing. Um, I photographed both my family as well as um, the arts community that I wanted to engage in, in both um, Saigon as well as Phnom Penh. And um, I'm hoping that the images that I um, was able to capture and document um, will kind of help inform um, the community that I work with right now in the Southeast Asian community in New York as well as on the East Coast. Um, and so, yeah, so that kind of helps um, some of the work that I've been doing these past couple of years and wanting to document um, the various community that's, that's, you know, that's a part of this um, diaspora that happens, I think, especially yeah. after the war in Southeast Asia since 1975. Um, and then, uh, and then all in the meantime, wanting to organize communities and what does it mean to um, advocate when you're from a particular community for under, underrepresented resources and opportunities. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find uh, something to send you real quick. Mm -hmm. I have a friend, so I took a class in, uh, I'm a graphic designer, and I took a class in uh, kind of, dip, uh, I, I forget the name, but it was like kind of non-traditional non ways of, of handling graphic design. Okay. And one of my friends, uh, he's actually from Vietnam. Okay. And his thesis project was based on uh, his parents migrating from uh, from Vietnam, but I for, I forget his full name, so that's what I'm trying to find for you. Yeah, that that so, sounds really great. So what's what's been the most difficult uh, difficult thing for you trying to build that? Because uh, I'm trying to also build this uh, like cross cultural uh, dialogue and and respect. Um, mine's more African American Latino youth, but mm -hmm. what has been one of your most difficulties with uh, the Cambodian and uh, and Vietnamese. I mean, I think um, it's hard to say. I think because I'm, I feel like there's been a lot of people who've attempted at this. I think both um, people who are outside of the community as well as inside. And I mean by that, people who, are, who either identify as Southeast Asian or not. And I think, um, especially now, um, working in the Bronx, I, I didn't grow up in the Bronx, so I think. Um, working and coming um, to the community as a bit of an outsider, not having grown up in the community. I think um, I really try to be conscious of what that means, kind of like the privilege that I do come with, especially I think um, being in, in formal, you know, formal U.S. educated schools. I think a lot of the community members um, haven't gone through, the, uh, you know, the higher education system. And I think um, they're just being careful about just some of the, the, you know, the languages and privileges that I come with. Um, and also, like, I think especially using photography and, um, you know, wanting to document and, um, you know, who am I to do that? What am I doing all this work for? And I think really, um, I think really communicating that with the people that I work with and also, um, you know, telling them what, what is it that I'm really trying to do? So I think, um, and I think, I mean, essentially that highlights this kind of, um, this idea around trust and what does it mean um, 
to do all that. Yeah, so, exactly. um, yeah, yeah. I think around, and then also, you know, language on top of that too. I work with different intergenerational older people as well as younger people. Uh -huh. Um, yeah. So that's, those are just some of the issues that I think I, I often think about. Yeah. I think it's very important. I've, and I've discovered that, uh, with my practice is, is, is having that respect and being very authentic with people mm. and, and understanding that, uh, you're also like a, you're a learner as well as like a teacher sometimes too. Mm. Like it's a mutual uh, relationship. Yeah, check out that, uh, click on that link real quick. David Lamb, that sounds familiar. Um, so this is my, my colleague from, uh, he's gonna graduate this year, but he's a graphic designer. And this is a project I was telling you. Okay. Uh, and the, yeah, just scroll, scroll down and. That's really cool. And I'm not sure if, yeah, he has a he has a video in regards to that, and that's the exhibition all the way at the bottom. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, check out his work, and uh, he's not really focused on photography, but it's 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 using photography to create those posters. Yeah, I mean it's so it's so interesting. I mean, I say I work with photography, but really, it's for me, it's it's really a tool. And I, you know, I often I don't want to tell people I'm a photographer. I do work with images, but yeah, to be able to like translate that into um, the messages, I think it's really cool. Yeah, um, yeah, he he dove in more. He's not a social justice sort of uh, artist, yeah, a graphic designer. But his project was him diving into like investigating his parents' experience of migrating, um, yeah, migrating here to the states. Yeah. Okay. Now tell me about more about your project. I've heard um, actually really great things about your school. I actually that was, that was that was one of the school that I was looking into when I was like um, thinking about graduate school. So yeah, tell me more about your work and like yeah. I, um, well, can we share? I'll, I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Um, that way we can. Uh, oh. Can you uh, see my screen? Yes, I can. All right. Um, well, I'm just going to go through real quick, like what I presented. Uh, it was earlier this this week, uh, like my work. Uh, so my project that I did was uh, the Open Hearts. And that's mm -hmm. the name of the. So the partnership that I developed with two organizations, and it was uh, Viewfinders and, and Casa de Maryland. Viewfinders was uh, mainly African American, mm -hmm. and Casa de Maryland is Latino. And they're both like six blocks away from each other, not too far, uh, but their focus was very specific to a like, very, very specific community. Uh, so I wanted to work bo with both of them uh, to bring them together uh, to create cross-cultural sensitivity uh, between those two communities. Uh, but I think one of the really important things is being an organizer and also an artist working with communities is building that trust and that respect uh, for them and them for you before mm -hmm. you try to uh, bring them together. So with the viewfinders, I had, I had worked with them for almost a year and a half before I asked them to do this as a, mm -hmm. as a volunteer. With CASA, I had worked with them for just like four months as a volunteer before I proposed uh, this project. Um, our mission for this project is, is mainly working with, with young people uh, to, to see themselves as creative people, but also as entrepreneurs and somebody that can create change in their community. Uh, so I talked about my background, like me being Mexican. Mm. Um, so this is actually me, the little kid right here. We'll <laughs> that. Um, and, and this image actually kind of relates to uh, how I see myself and how others, like those being in Mexico, see me. I see myself as like, the, the one cousin without the, the hat, without the sombrero, <laughs> because I am Mexican, but I grew up in the States. Mm. So when I go to, when I go to Mexico, uh, I'm American, but when I'm here, I'm Mexican. Mm. So that, that picture kind of talks a little bit about uh, my background and, and how, how I perceive myself. I think now, uh, especially because I just recently applied for my uh, citizenship, mm. Um, I'm like questioning like how, like how am I going to label myself as an artist uh, mm -hmm. so I've been debating like am I a uh, Mexican American artist or am I a Chicano artist um, so I'm, I'm still figuring that out and I think this picture kind of talks a lot about it wow um, and then yeah you talk about photography I, I'm a, I do consider myself a photographer and this is one of the images I, I took the last time I was in Mexico uh, and it talks a lot about this phrase we have in Mexico it's called uh, it's, it goes, "Se te ve no pala na frente," which means uh, you can you can see that you can see the cactus right on your forehead, <laughs> which is like no matter where you go in life, like you're always gonna be brown. You're always gonna be a. a, 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 a 
uh, when I was growing up, one of the uh, people that I really looked up to uh, was uh, my uncle. Hmm. Uh, my uncle Mar- Marcos was in Los Angeles, was the first city I lived in. Uh, and he was really into art. Uh, he loved art. He loved, uh, he just loved being himself and just being a, just unique and not sticking to what other people were uh, telling him to do. Uh, especially in Los Angeles where you have this stigma or this spe- expectation for uh, a young male, especially Latinos, to be very like centered around uh, being very proud of who they are, like the, the culture being Mexican and being uh, like involved with the gang culture as well. Mm. So he was very different. Like he played basketball and he was into art. And I remember one thing that he told me is like, always be yourself. Don't be afraid to approve that. Um, but unfortunately, he he got uh, murdered uh, mm. into a conflict with uh, an African American. Um, but shockingly, I came across these pictures. I had no idea these existed, and these are these are a mural uh, artist called El Mac, mm-hmm. which is a very famous street artist, uh, international street artist. Uh, created these two pieces of, about my uncle that I had no idea existed. Until, wow. Uh, three days ago. So this is actually the house where I I I, uh, I lived for a little while, like this house back here. And this is the wall that he used to always uh, spray paint on. And El Mac created this piece about my uncle, just in memory of him. Yeah. The one piece that I'm I'm yet to show my students is this. Uh, and I was actually there at his bur- burial, and I was there and I saw this. But it's this is what I want to avoid with my work is seeing another li- lost. Hmm due to racial conflicts. Wait, you found this work three days ago? Yeah. And it's how did a, you come that? How did you go about that? That's crazy. I just Googled my, my, my uncle's name, uh, Marcos Vasquez, uh, and his street name was Verse. And there was, it was right on the guy's website. And it was crazy because he's like, I've been following this guy's work for years. And wow. And created these, these pieces about my uncle. Um, and it's crazy though, as you, as you see like more of my work, like this is the work that I did in undergrad and, it mimic, yeah. sort of, and, it, and it's mimicking this sort of style. But my work's been really about uh, race and, and working with kids. So this is what I did in undergrad. And what really caught me was people's reactions to this work. Mm. So I posted these up like in a public setting and people did this to them. Mm. Uh, and that kind of pushed me to uh, make things more uh, that would last longer and people really wouldn't be inclined to, to tear it apart. Yeah. Despite like how uh, political the messages might be. Like that one was about uh, a group of kids I'd been working with uh, in my uh, student teaching. Mm. We were a small group of African-American youth where I think like 80% of the school was white. Mm. So they, they felt like they were targeted uh, just because of, of their skin tone and just like negative stereotypes. So I put these in the city and people's reactions were, were interesting. <laughs> mm. uh, but this is the work I did and for the reason why I got the award this this past year uh, was with the work I did with the African American Youth in Baltimore and with mm. the Finders. Um, so the, yeah, these are the works I did and they were about my connection with the kids and what they aspired to be. Uh, but one of my major really influences uh, and I recommend if you're not familiar with them. Do you know Tim Rollins? Yes, yes. I actually know his work. Yeah. I work with the Bronx Art Museum. And like, yeah, we had to, like, yeah, we came across a lot of his work. I was like, if you, if you don't know Tim Rollins and KOS and you're, <laughs> you're in New York, I was like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, so we, I saw his documentary uh, when I first started the program. Mm. And it really got me thinking uh, of like, how could I create a space where, where kids could, could be like that and connect with me? Mm. Especially me, unlike Tim Rollins actually being a person of color mm. and growing up in a similar situation as the kids. Uh, yeah, he, and then he actually came uh, here to Micah uh, three, three weeks ago, three or four weeks ago. Okay. It was really great uh, for it to come like full circle from when I saw his documentary to like me at the end of my uh, two years here. Wow. And talk. Uh, another person that I recommend, especially uh, being, you being a woman, Mm. Is uh, Fabiana, uh, Fabiana Rodriguez, and uh, she's a she's about women. Her work is about women rights and uh, also uh, like uh, 
like gay rights. Mm -hmm. uh, but right now, our, one of our other focuses is uh, is immigration rights. And it's not immigration rights just for Latinos, but immigration rights for everybody. Uh, and I think that's what people don't realize is that right now, yeah, we're like Latinos are the ones on TV for like, uh, you know, asking for, for their rights, but it's across the board, you know, Asians and uh, uh, people from, from the Caribbean, Africans, we're all, we all come to this country sometimes illegally. Uh, Definitely. I mean, when you think about it, we're all immigrants here. Like um, we're the people who are yeah. really native to this land, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, so her work kind of deals. She's an organized. She's she's an artist, but she's like she's an organizer and she's a she's an activist <laughs> and she's an artist all in one. So I recommend you look her up because she's okay. she's brought together the native Native Americans with the Latinos uh, yeah. to uh, create workshops. It's some really awesome stuff. Uh, she she's been here in D.C. to do workshops where she like this print right here. It's just uh, black and white. It's like a huge color page. Mm -hmm. She shows up. At like different cities and she has people uh, watercolor on them and then she goes back and, and paces them up throughout the cities uh, sort of to bring awareness towards the cause and to be more open-minded towards uh, and uh, getting more rights for immigrants mm -hmm. and that's kind of the what my project's been is, is to get the african-american kids to respect the latinos but to also recognize that it's immigration rights is the full gamma it's not just latinos it's everybody that uh you know from all over the world that come to this this country mm. um so yeah i recommend you look her up i think she might be very uh, inspirational for for your practice as you're trying to uh bridge bridge these two communities together or, or just you know i'm pretty sure that's this is immigration is an issue that they might be facing as well yeah, especially like, you know, we just had May Day yesterday too. And what is yeah. it meant to like international workers, right? And to the man, you know, like our present. Um, so all of that is, yeah, very, very, very relevant, especially right now. Yeah. yeah. So, so why is my practice in Baltimore? Um, at, there's a lot of people here in Baltimore. And this is a quote from one of my uh, students' uh, parents, one of the African-American students. Uh, this is at the end of last semester, last year, and he says, uh, I feel like they're all just doing our jobs, and he was in reference to uh, Latinos. And we had a conversation about why Latinos were coming to Baltimore. Mm -hmm. And I asked him, I was, like, I, was like, I was like, have you been pulled over for like just being black? And he's like, yeah. He's like, I hate it. I was like, yeah. I was like, there's, there's people that are tired of being racially profiled, and Baltimore has, has opened their doors for, um, mm -hmm. for immigrants. Uh, there were, they're kind of, as quoted by the Washington Post, from the Washington Post, Baltimore has put out a, like a welcome mat for immigrants. Uh, their population is going down. People are just moving out of this city. Uh, mm. Because uh, it used to be much like, the, much what Detroit is seeing right now, where mm. it's, you know, because of the lack of uh, industry here. Uh, so there's a, there's a high drive to bring in immigrants. So the city has banned uh, officers from detaining anybody just for the <laughs> just just for their status. So interesting. <laughs> yeah, so they're, they're completely the opposite of Arizona right now. So if like ICE, which is the like immigration customs, uh, yeah, customs, mm -hmm. uh, if they like actually take somebody in, the cities ask them to say that they're not part of the city; they're part of the federal agency. Mm. And the police and the police can't like if. If somebody will pull me over and give me a ticket, I, and I feel like they, they did it because I was Latino, I could mm -hmm. go to court to argue that I felt like I was being racially profiled. So it's, it's been great just to, to have this conversation with the kids. What does it mean to be racially profiled and, and what are your rights um, as a re resident of the city? But even to think to talk about the reasons behind that, why you know there is a more you know welcoming to immigrants now because this the city needs them, you know. <laughs> so the so the city's lost like three thousand people like within the last ten years every year. Yeah. Um, and right now the city has grown with like fourteen thousand like immigrant people. It's not just Latinos, mm. uh, foreign born people. And I, you see that little star right here. Mm -hmm. that, that's really where I work. And program is within that neighborhood right there, and that neighborhood has has grown 135 uh, percent increase in Latinos uh, within the last three years. 
So that neighborhood is slowly changing, um, but it's still predominantly African American. Like this blue right here is like close to 90% African American, and the Latinos only makes like a small portion. It's only 6%. Um, but it's grown from being you know 2% to not being 6% to you know eventually it's going to grow to be at least 30%. It's going to make a big chunk of that neighborhood. Uh, but tensions are tensions are rising. I'm not sure with, with where where you're working and uh, if there are any tensions that are rising between uh, the the two different cultures. I mean, yes, there is. Um, I think historically, I think coming from Southeast Asia, um, you know, the big war was you know um, the Vietnam War that happened. But then there were also a lot of undeclared war. I think uh -huh. that happened that a lot, not a lot of people know about, especially between the countries, um, Vietnam and and Cambodia being um, one of them. And so um, because of like, you know, the Khmer Rouge and like the cultural, um, basically genocide of Cambodia, um, a lot of artists and cultural workers um, were basically um, killed and, um, in Cambodia. And so, um, and so, I mean, uh, and the Vietnamese were a part of kind of like the war and conflict and then eventually it ended. Um, and so there's always been, I think, tensions in like the Southeast Asia area. And then you could even see the trend, even though the two groups, I would, from what I've seen, were very similar culturally. I think the only difference is language wise and maybe um, some physical attributes. But for the most part, the culture are very similar, you know, um, because it, it extends back thousands of years. And so um, when you even see the migration and displacements that happen throughout the world, um, often the two communities are often um, in similar, very working class immigrant refugees um, living in their, under very similar circumstances and um, environments. And um, I mean, even now, one thing I really like about Mekong, the organization I work with, is that um, it's really trying to um, work with both organizations together and what it means to be Southeast Asian and our collective history and what, you know, what our similarities are. And, you know, and I mean, taking into account um, the differences in our culture as well, but how do we connect and organize together so that we build a stronger community that will, um, you know, represent both of our um, communities and our culture and our languages. Um, so that's, you know, it's, it's very, it's very interesting. I mean, I think um, you can kind of relate to kind of, I think some of the uh, black and brown conflict too. Um, I, I always think it's really sad when there's so much division that happens when you, but when you think about it, there's so much like, you know, collective and share history that also, goes on as well and I think um yeah I think that that's that's something that's I think we're always uh, consciously um aware of and talking about how do we um connect to each other and to build the internal trust within ourselves first um so that we can be stronger yeah and that and that's yeah you hit you hit the the nail with the, you know right on the head um mm -hmm. I think that's one of the biggest biggest difficulties is, is getting people to uh build that trust and that respect and, and just being okay with uh, with each other mm. uh, and respecting those differences but recognizing the similarities and there's a lot of similarities between brown and black people uh, and they don't really see it from the beginning and this i think you talked about this a little bit and i've developed my kind of like four like virtues to, to like my practice i couldn't think <laughs> of like the right word for it like i was like i don't know what it is i don't even know if virtues is the right word but you talked about it a little bit, and I mm -hmm. think you see the similarities between our work is like uh, the need for change has to come for those from those in despair. Mm -hmm. We can't just like force the change. Mm -hmm. We got to get them to like think about it or or make them realize that it's it's something that they want to happen. That it's not just something that you know we think should happen. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you you talked a little bit about this, and a lot of the kids <laughs> have told me it's like yeah, you just you're just real. Like you you tell us straight up like where you're from and why you're doing what you're doing. And they're like, what? you're just real. You tell us your intentions. Mm. And I think that's, that's something that a lot of organizers uh, don't realize. Uh, that's very important for people. Uh, it's just being upfront with them and just mm. telling them what your intentions are and how long you're going to be there. You don't want to uh, give them like false, uh, like, at, like false aspirations or, or, or false ideas. You just want to be as upfront as you can be. Mm. Uh, and then the, the next two is just be really open to collaborate. Uh, you, as an organizer and as an artist, uh, you're, you're very talented. 
<laughs> and you, you want to do everything. Yeah. Uh, but I think this has uh, made me grow more as a person is realizing my limits mm. and being okay to partner up with somebody and be like, oh, you know, you, you, can you lead this workshop? And I sort of know how to do it, but are you okay leading it? And I want you to come in and be a mentor to those kids. Uh, and the last thing, and it's very important, I think, especially as, a, as, as you work with uh, underprivileged communities, is that's having that sustainable development. Mm. where you actually are teaching them skills that if you do happen to leave the project or whatever you're doing will will live on um as with me it's like teaching the, the kids how to how to screen print how to create uh, posters themselves and how to get the stuff printed and how mm. to and how to be like entrepreneurs uh, for themselves so if, if i happen to leave for whatever reason i know that they have those skills already developed to uh, continue uh, with the work we've done. Um, and the work we've done is we've done posters. Mm -hmm. This is kind of where we started talking about like symbols and what do symbols mean? Mm. Um, so we have uh, black power and during this time, during the seventies and, and early sixties, and there was also uh, the United farm workers mm. and surprisingly and oddly enough, it's, it's kind of interesting that they partnered me and you up because uh, of <laughs> our cross cross cultural trying to bridge to two 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 different cultures and similar cultures together yeah but i had no idea the united farm workers actually uh they worked with the uh, filipinos actually yeah 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 and that was great for the kids to see that and, and understand uh understand that uh on my end because I had no idea either. <laughs> I think the new documentary is coming out, right, about Cesar Chavez? Yeah, I'm going to talk yeah. a little bit about it. You'll yeah. <laughs> see. Um, so some of the shirts we created, uh, like this one's like, why fit in when you're uh, born to stand out? Mm. Which in reference to, you know, that advice that my uncle gave me. Mm. And we also had, like, stuff in Spanglish. Like, stop, <laughs> hating. stop hating, no mind. Uh, and some, some more of our T-shirts. And this one's pretty clever. It's uh, your ego, no stop amigo. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. But the kids developed, like, they started working as, they started seeing themselves as as, uh, as leaders, but also as, as people that that had something to share, and, and they, they knew, they had skills that they wanted to share with, with the community. Uh, so this is some more pictures of, of, of them working. Mm. But I think what's really important that I realized, and I'm not sure exactly the, you talked a little bit about the age group that you work with. It's very diverse. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think it's very important. The, the important thing that I realized that it was more than just about the art, but it was providing them with a space uh, to be creative and for them to just talk about these issues and to give them experiences that they wouldn't have otherwise if, if, this, if this partnership didn't exist. Uh, not just art, but just like going out to do a photo shoot, uh, you know, celebrating, we celebrated Day of the Dead. Uh, mm -hmm. so like, uh, Halloween. Mm -hmm. uh, we went out and we actually saw the opening of Cesar Chavez here in DC. Oh, nice. And that's when I realized we watched the documentary and then the kids actually went backstage and they got to meet uh, Rosario da Dawson. Oh, wow. <laughs> and it was really great because uh, I knew I knew that she was a multi-racial, mm -hmm. uh, but she like kind of just reinst reinstated the uh, uh, what I've been teaching the kids and what the kids have been learning because she she labels herself as Afro Latina mm. and she was talking about like this need that needs to happen now or this desire that she has for for the two communities to to come together. So the kids were very starstruck. Uh, I think like this kid right here, the one all the way on the left, Derek. He's like, oh, I just want to marry her. <laughs> I was like, are you just you're just star starstruck? I was like, <laughs> I was like, but you paid attention to what she was telling you, right? She's like, yeah. Yeah, she's so right. I was like, yeah, I'm so glad because they got to share with with her, you know, somebody that's really famous, uh, their work, but she also like just reinstated uh, our ideas. Uh, so it was a great experience for the kids to uh, go see the, the opening of the movie. Uh, but we we started having workshops in the community. So it was one of our workshops we had. Uh, unfortunately, it was, it was raining, so we ended up doing it inside. Mm. Uh, but we also have done uh, workshops here at MICA to engage uh, the MICA community, the mm. art community. So this is actually my director of my program. Mm. <laughs> and we got him to come out and, and run a screen printing, I mean a monoprinting workshop where the kids uh, learn how to monoprint. Mm. Uh, 
uh, and we even got like the security guards to do some prints mm. and talk about the, these issues. Uh, we also partnered up with uh, Mike Underground. And this is kind of where I was saying like collaborating. It's like, I knew how to do these things, but I didn't, I wanted to affect or talk about, about this issue with more people and get them mm. more involved with the project. And this is one of the Mike Undergrad who, who designed our next, our new t-shirt for us. Wow, that's beautiful. Uh, and here's, here's our more images of our events. Uh, but this is, I think, the big kind of uh, capstone to everything. I, I built this this cart for the kids uh, to run their workshops, uh, and it's L R cart, so it looks like a like a push cart, like an ice cream cart. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so the kids it has speakers on it, and the kids can. Uh, we've been organizing uh, uh, to do workshops in the community with this with this sculpture, I guess if you would call it. <laughs> uh, but people learn how to how to do the screen printing, and this is uh, our. Our event this past weekend, we did it in the street, and we got people to talk about these issues and uh, learn how to print and and go take away with them uh, uh, a free print. Mm. Uh, but I've been busy. It's just because of my master's program. I think it's pushed me to uh, create all this work uh, within like a small period of time. Mm. Uh, and this is our show, and I always. People are always like, it's your show, right? It's like, no, it's it's our show. And I think it's having that respect where uh, this project kind of was a collaboration. It was, yeah, it was me as a lead facilitator and as a lead organizer. But it's, at the end, it's everybody played a role and it's like our show. Mm -hmm. um, and the kids again at the show and then showing off uh, what they've learned and engaging the people that came to the gallery uh, with conversations about these issues again. And that's actually our, our president. So he came out and or, and he's like leaving this year. So it was, it was great for him to come out and, and for the kids to see him. Mm. Uh, that's very cool. Wait, I think you mentioned this before in like other like um, conversations, uh -huh. but um, the, the youth that you work with, are they a part of like a program particular, an organization or a school? How did yes. they come together? Yeah. So they all come together. So it's all in the first. Uh, so. So. Oh the, yes, yeah. Sorry, sorry. So the African American kids are from this organization. Okay. And the Latino kids are from this. Okay. African American students, there is photo base and, and graphic base, and mm -hmm. now video, but it's been an art program. Okay. Uh, since it started in uh, 2011. Okay. And Casa de Maryland is. Uh, there it's Mi Espacio is their after school program for kids okay. but that's a brand new program it literally just started uh, this within the last two years yeah uh, but they're more like direct action organization like they do they organize like marches and they're really all about like helping low-income Latino mm -hmm. families but something that I've learned along the, the way is is being able to prove this <laughs> Like my our outcomes, mm. and I think as a as a practicing artist and as an as a organizer as well, I think we need to be a little bit better as proving that we actually create a change. Mm. Um, and I'm not sure if I'm doing it the right way, but I've been just giving like, uh, like questionnaires to the kids to fill out. So from the questionnaires, I discovered that like 90 percent of of the kids that's been showing up. I said they've developed like a positive view towards each other. Um, and then we have like, I've been able to like quote them. So like when I like, now that I'm trying to apply for grants, like I can give them like tangible things. Um, but I think I need to get a little bit better at like figuring out how to, how to get more hard facts as to what they're learning. Mm. Um, like, like this one was one of the girls who showed off on and off, but she still walked away saying like, uh, African American Latinos are all in the same boat, fighting against white supremacy and oppression. Uh, so they should stop fighting against each other and uh, work together instead. So very kind of tangible outcomes that I think uh, my program has taught me to be really, really act, really proactive about getting like hard facts and also like taking pictures. Mm. So I'm so I'm glad that like you were talking about like you've leaned towards like, photography. Mm. 
because I, I think uh, we, when we write grants or we ask for money, uh, I think it's one of the biggest ways that we can advocate for ourselves is actually showing, showing you know, people smiling and having fun and, and how, how our practice uh, works. Um, but one really important thing is, is this, and seeing this person say this. Elizabeth Alex is the director of CASA. And she was like indifferent at first whether she should partner up with me, and she was not fully convinced. I feel like she was testing me for like the first two months I was trying to partner up with her, for her not like responding to my emails and <laughs> like being really hard to get in contact with. And I think at the end, uh, she was very, very excited to see my artwork and, and the outcomes we had. And you can see it in this Facebook uh, tag. She, she said, it's a beautiful example of art that changes lives and communities. Uh, thank you, Edgar, for all your work and bringing uh, Mia Spacio and, and Baltimore United Viewfinders together. Mm. And I think the last thing is very important, at least for me, because oh. knowing how hard it was for me to make that relationship with her, for her to say like, that I'm always welcome uh, at our organization. Oh, that's awesome. So... Luckily, I've been. This is my thesis work, which is why I have like all these images, and I just <laughs> the presentation. But, uh, but yeah, that's that's what I've done in the last uh, year uh, within me getting the award from Magic America. This is really amazing. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. And, yeah. <laughs> and I, yeah, I, I think we uh, we share a lot of similar things in our in our in our practice, um, and I'm excited. Uh, uh, hear more about uh, what have you been up to and how do you how do you use art in, in your practice definitely um, yeah I mean I think the work just really continues I think um, school is definitely like a you know a space to Edgar oh yeah. <laughs> okay yeah Just press like the wrong button <laughs> yeah sorry I think um, I mean school is definitely a great space, but, um, to like, you know, um, ignite a lot of these ideas. Um, but definitely it's not the only space and definitely not the, the ending space to, I think, carry a lot of these projects and things out. Um, and I think I really, um, echo to what you said about collaboration. I think it's so important, especially being an artist and organizer who want to engage in community. We can't work in isolation. We have to collaborate. And I think that's where really some really amazing and powerful ideas comes out. Um, from those collaborations. The connections so uh now uh are you are you planning on staying in uh new york or and yeah. continue your work i think right now yes i, I definitely want to continue my work um with mekong and the southeast asian community there's something about i think um wanting to just um work on the projects i'm engaging in um but i think for me also keeping in mind um actually one of my goals is to live in southeast asia so that's i think the next step in transitioning but i think right now um i'm i feel like i'm still learning a lot and i think to be a miss in the midst of all the this work and all the people that are here and like the projects and i think excitement i think with like, so many things that's happening i think even in the world and like um yeah other communities as in, i mean as you know new york is so diverse it means there's so much um communities and groups i think similar to I mean there's a lot of i think um urban cities in the country um that's going on i think with a lot of transition i think um yeah right now i think um to continue that work what, but what about yourself um where do you see yourself um uh well yeah. i gotta i gotta find a full-time job okay yeah <laughs> um so i'm really i really want to stay in baltimore uh -huh. um so i'm trying to figure out a way that i can i can work here yeah um, i've gotten offers to okay work somewhere else outside the city. Mm -hmm. uh, I might take them unless something pops up here. Uh, mm -hmm. But I want to continue my work, uh, sort of pushing my myself to, uh, like, who am I? Yeah, um, mm -hmm. I'm going to start 